The following is the true story of a mega tsunami that occurred following a major landslide into a dam in northeastern Italy in 1963. In the serene landscape of northern Italy, nestled in the valley of the Vaillant River and guarded by the looming presence of Monte Toc, stands the Vaillant Dam. This architectural marvel, one of the world's tallest dams, stands at 262 metres or 860 feet tall. The dam is situated within the municipality of Erto e Caso, a tranquil area about 100 kilometres or 62 miles north of Venice. However, beneath this tranquility lurked a devastating interplay of human miscalculation and natural forces, which would culminate in one of the most tragic engineering disasters of the 20th century. During the dam's construction and initial years of operation, warning signs were plentiful. Monte Toc is nicknamed the Walking Mountain due to how many landslides occur and minor landslides and earth movements were routinely dismissed or underestimated by the dam's managing company Said and the Italian government. These early signs were precursors to a much larger calamity as geological instability beneath Monte Toc was grossly overlooked. In the years leading up to the disaster, several incidents including landslides and tremors served as ominous harbingers of the impending catastrophe. Yet these warning signals were met with silence or subdued by legal actions against those who dared to report them. As October the 9th, 1963 transitioned from a day like any other into a night of horror, the Vaillant Dam, a towering structure of concrete, stood over the tranquil Italian valley. However, the serenity of the evening was deceptive, masking the cataclysm that was about to unfold. Engineers stationed at the dam were the first to witness the ominous prelude to the disaster. Signs of an impending landslide became unmistakable as trees began to fall and boulders, once firmly embedded in the earth, tumbled down into the lake below. These were the harbingers of a geological calamity that had been ignored for far too long. Despite previous efforts to mitigate the potential disaster by lowering the reservoir's water level to what was believed to be a safe threshold, the landslide's relentless movement continued. The engineers, acutely aware of the potential consequences, could only watch in a mix of awe and horror as the inevitable approached. At precisely 10.39pm, the mountain's precarious balance gave way. A massive landslide spanning approximately 2 kilometers or 1.2 miles in length and consisting of an estimated 260 million cubic meters or 9.2 billion cubic feet of forest, earth and rock detached from Monte Toc's northern flank. The landslide plunged into the reservoir at a terrifying speed, estimated to reach up to 110 kilometers per hour or 68 miles per hour. The impact was not just physical but seismic, sending shockwaves throughout the valley. In a matter of seconds, the dynamics of nature rewrote the destiny of the Vaillant Valley. The landslide, an unstoppable force of nature, filled the reservoir in under a minute. The displacement of water was monumental. The initial collision with the lake generated not one but three colossal waves, each with its own path of destruction. The first wave shot upwards with tremendous force, reaching the houses of Kassel and then recoiling into the landslide itself, reshaping the landscape as it went. The second wave lashed out at the lake's shores, eroding the land and demolishing parts of Erto e Caso. The third and most catastrophic wave rose high above the dam's crest, a towering wall of water poised to descend upon the valley below. As the wave crested over the dam, an engineering marvel that was meant to harness nature's power brought with it a deluge of destruction. The dam itself, a testament to human ingenuity, stood almost intact, its structure defiant in the face of nature's wrath. However, the road that connected the dam to the surrounding areas was swept away. The wave, carrying approximately 50 million cubic meters or 1.8 billion cubic feet of water and an unimaginable amount of debris, crashed into the Piave Valley with an unfathomable force. Towns like Longaroni, which lay in the path of this liquid avalanche, were obliterated in moments. Buildings, roads and lives were swept away, leaving a landscape that bore no resemblance to the vibrant community that existed mere moments before. The wave transformed the valley into a scene of apocalyptic devastation, with mud and wreckage stretching as far as the eye could see. The Vaillant Dam disaster would forever be etched in history not just as an engineering failure, but as a tragic lesson about the complex and often fraught relationship between humanity and the natural world. As dawn broke on October the 10th, 1963, the extent of the disaster began to unfold in the stark light of day. The picturesque valley that once bustled with life was now a desolate expanse of destruction. 
The towns that dotted the Piave Valley, once vibrant and full of life, were now silent, their voices forever silenced by the towering wave that had swept through the valley mere hours before. Rescue and recovery operations were monumental tasks. The soldiers, primarily composed of the Alpini and combat engineers, worked tirelessly, their hands digging through the rubble in a relentless search for survivors and the deceased. The grim reality of their task weighed heavily on their shoulders as they uncovered the remains of those who had perished in the disaster. The firefighters, drawn from 46 provincial commands, embodied the spirit of unity and determination. Their ranks swelled to 850 men, including divers, land and helicopter teams, all equipped with a plethora of vehicles and gear. Their operations were not confined to the search of human lives, they also extended to the recovery of toxic substances a poignant reminder of the disaster's far-reaching implications. The destruction wrought by the wave was indiscriminate, sparing few structures in its path. Longarone, once a town teeming with life, was now a testament to the disaster's fury, with only the town hall and a few houses to the north standing as solemn witnesses to the tragedy. The devastation extended beyond the immediate vicinity of the dam, with numerous smaller villages along the lakefront bearing the brunt of the giant displacement wave. The villages in the territory of Erto y Caso and the village of Codisago near Castalavazo were left in a state of ruin, their landscapes forever altered. The human cost of the disaster was staggering. The official death toll, while uncertain, is estimated to be between 1,900 and 2,500 people, with around 350 families losing all of their members. The survivors, those who were spared the wave's destruction, were left to mourn their lost loved ones and to rebuild their lives from the remnants of the catastrophe. The dam, the epicenter of the tragedy, stood largely undamaged, its masonry washed away but its structure defiantly intact, a haunting symbol of the disaster that had unfolded. In the immediate aftermath, the response from the government, politicians and public authorities was one of denial and deflection. The narrative pushed by these entities sought to portray the tragedy as an unforeseen and unavoidable act of nature, a convenient veil to obscure the underlying human errors and negligence that had precipitated the disaster. The media landscape was fraught with political bias and manipulation, with publications like Liunita, the mouthpiece of the Partito Comunista Italiano, taking a stand against the official narrative and denouncing the actions of the management and government. This stance was met with fierce opposition from other segments of the media, particularly those aligned with the ruling party, leading to a polarised and contentious discourse that often overlooked the real victims of the disaster, the people of the Piave Valley. The legal proceedings that followed the disaster were marred by controversy and criticism. The trial, relocated to La Aquila in Abruzzo, was seen as a strategic move to limit public scrutiny and participation. The sentences handed down were viewed by many as lenient, a stark contrast to the scale of the tragedy and the suffering it had caused. The lack of substantial accountability for the companies involved, particularly SAID and the government bodies responsible for overseeing the dam's construction and operation, left a deep sense of injustice in the hearts of those affected. In the years that followed, the survivors were relocated to a newly established village, Vaillant, a place that was meant to be a fresh start but also served as a constant reminder of what had been lost. For those who chose to return to their mountain life in Erto e Caso, the discouragement they faced from authorities was yet another hurdle in their journey to reclaim their lives. The reconstruction efforts in Longaroni and other villages in the Piave Valley were symbolic of the resilience and determination to move forward, but they also underscored the immense challenges that lay ahead. The government's response to the disaster was multifaceted, with initiatives aimed at promoting the industrialization of northeastern Italy and providing support to the survivors. However, these measures were not without their shortcomings. The compensation efforts, while well-intentioned, were often criticised for their lack of clarity and fairness, leading to public discontent and a perception that the true victims of the disaster were not receiving the support they deserved. The survivors were entitled to a range of benefits, including business startup loans, public subsidies and tax exemptions, but these were often exploited by larger industrial entities, further compounding the sense of injustice felt by the affected communities. The legacy of the Vaillon Dam disaster is one of pain, loss and resilience. It serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of human error and the relentless force of nature. The dam, still standing as a sombre monument to the tragedy and the dry basin now open to visitors are testaments to the disaster that forever changed the landscape and the lives of those who were touched by it. The Vaillant Dam disaster remains a poignant chapter in the history of Italy, 
a narrative of catastrophe, survival, and the enduring human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. Thanks for watching.